I'm doing pasta bolognese. It's Daniel's birthday today and it's one of his favorite dishes. So I'm doing this for tonight's dinner. It is a really hearty meat sauce that has um, a very savory taste to it. Um, I'm using the old Rachel Ray recipe. I can't find it online anymore. It's in her first cookbook that she ever put out, which is this cookbook. 30 minute meals and it's her penne with classic bolognese meat sauce recipe. I, you're not going to be surprised to know that I double it because we love it and if I'm going to do it, let's do it and let's eat it twice or put it in the freezer. Um, and you also won't be surprised to hear that I have tweaked it to how I like it. Um, I guess my family likes it. I've got in this pot three pounds of ground beef. The recipe calls for one pound and if I were doing one recipe I would do a pound and a half and it also calls for a mix like a meatloaf mix with veal and pork and the beef and it's just easier <laughs> to buy the ground beef and we like the taste of the ground beef so why not so, I've got a very lean, 93% lean ground beef cooking, and the original recipe calls for four cloves of garlic, so I've got eight cloves of garlic in here, and it smells amazing. Um, normally, if I had any other kind of ground beef in here, I would be draining it at the end of cooking it like this. The 93% lean has very little fat that cooks out, and the longer that you cook it as you're browning it, getting your spices added to it, etc., the liquid that's cooked out cooks away to almost nothing. So, generally speaking, I'm not sweating it if I don't drain it all the way when it's this lean. A little bit of the fat helps with the finished product. I guess maybe if I use the veal pork beef mixture, it might make it a little bit more luscious and that would, that's why you would do that mixture. But I do it with a tiny bit of fat that's left. And I know it seems ridiculous to think that that, that fat's gonna cook out, but it actually does. It just either cooks into it or goes out of it. I don't know what it is, but it's getting, drier as I speak. Okay. It says to cook it with cracked black pepper. I have done it where I have actually taken black pepper cloves and put them in a bag and beat the snot out of it so that they would break but not be grated even as a coarse grate. Um, that was really good. It was really, um, had a little bit more spice to it and I loved it that way. I can see how that might be a bit too much for everybody. So I usually just use just my kitchen coarse um, black pepper that I just keep with my salt up in my spice cabinet. So what I'm gonna do, and it's really precise, it's not precise at all, I'm going to measure out some black pepper in the palm of my hand and believe it or not you go by the way it smells. If I want it to smell really peppery and spicy that's what I aim for. You can always add more you can't take away so if you add just a little bit at the beginning and see as it's cooking what it's beginning to smell like then you'll know if you want to add more. Hi Lori, hi Jenny. Okay, it's looking good. It's just ground beef. And I, you probably can't hear it, but it's, it's less wet all the time. And we're not quite there on the spice component, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'll probably add another quarter to half a teaspoon there of the pepper. And that smells really good, so we're gonna go with that. The next thing that it calls for is half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. 
and I love the crushed red pepper flakes. Especially when you've got a big red wine to go in this, it just adds so much to it. And normally I'd have my teaspoons out. I've done this so much that I can kind of eyeball it and it, it works out okay. But about half a teaspoon is just sort of the inside of your palm, my palm anyway, the tiny little inside. So I'm just gonna do that around. You can always add more red pepper flakes as well. And her secret ingredient, and it's the one that I love because it gives me another excuse to use allspice. Hey Tracy. Hello. Yes, why not? It's a rainy afternoon. I'm cooking. Actually, Sounds good uh, to me. Um, okay. Her uh, secret ingredient is ground allspice, which generally speaking I use in my um, spice cookies and kind of not much else. But I love the way that it makes this taste. So it says two pinches of allspice, double in the recipe. So what I'm going to do here, and I'll probably hit it with some more red pepper flakes as well. I usually start small on that and go up. So two. Okay. Let me see what it's smelling like here. Oh yeah. At first when you hit it with the allspice, your nose kind of does a double take, like why in the world are we putting allspice in beef like that? At least my nose does. But as it starts to cook around more, you can really smell what it's doing to all the flavors going together. Now, I'm smelling that it smells like it needs just a little bit more heat for me. So I'm going to add just another little dollop of the red pepper flakes. And let that cook in there. Get it going. <laughs> Birthday boy. Good. Smelling good? Okay. And there really isn't a lot to this recipe. So this, <laughs> unlike the, the chicken lettuce wraps that took forever, um, it is pretty straightforward. One pot, you see I have a measuring cup and a couple of other things and that's it. All right, now, if it were just me eating this, I would have a Spanish onion ready. I would have it in here cooking along with all of this, making the flavors go together. Since I don't really have onion eaters in my house, I have done the Rachel Ray trick of grating the onion into the ground beef and letting it cook as the ground beef is browning, which basically makes the onion completely go away. So that's one option. Since it's the birthday boy's request and he's really not an onion eater, I'm not gonna add onion but it's in the recipe and I will post the recipe as well. Um, the next thing is, once upon a time I could do it from memory, but I'm not gonna try it here. Um, a cup of beef broth. Once upon a time I got whatever was in the can, whatever was available. I've decided that I like the Wegmans bone broth. This happens to be the organic one, which is not necessary for me and it is for some people. Um, but I think it just has a much better taste than some of the other ones that I've tried. So I'm going to hit it with a couple of cups of the beef broth. And I, you couldn't see it, but I will tell you that the liquid that I was talking about, the fat, basically was all gone. It was getting very dry in there, which is why it was so incredibly loud. So, now I'm going to let that cook in here for just a second. And it cracks me up. Her early recipes, it says a couple of glugs of red wine, good red wine. Okay, well, if you're more precise like I am, let's put that down to an amount. And then we can play with the amount if you like it or don't like it. But um, if you, whatever 
good red wine you like. It, it usually needs to be a big one. Um, we're not going to cook this all day. This is kind of a quick recipe. You're not going to do what the classic bolognese recipe would do, which would be to let everything sort of marinate together all day. So we're going to hit it with a big bunch of flavor with the wine that we choose. And I'll tell you, I have a lot of favorites um, that I like to cook with. I never put anything in it that I'm not going to drink otherwise. So, um, because that's, that's wasteful, that's right. Um, there is a red wine in the Italian section at Wegmans that is a Familia Castellani, and it's a Sangiovese, which is, um, I think I'm right about this. It's, it's Chianti, but it's not from the Chianti region, but it's the same kind of grapes. If I'm wrong about that, somebody please let me know, because that's what I've always thought. A glug to her was about a third of a cup, so I'm going to add two-thirds of a cup, and I'll tell you honestly, I may end up hitting it with the whole cup, depending on what it starts to smell like when I get my tomatoes in there. Okay, so I'm going to let the red wine marry with the beef broth and all of those spices that we've put in there. Oh gosh, it smells so good. I've been baking birthday cake. And that was smelling amazing, but I, I gotta tell you, I think this is even better. Okay, it's looking good. I wish you could see exactly how good it looks and smells, um, but there you have it. Okay, and I have got, well, um, two cans of crushed tomatoes. And it's 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. I happen to like the Wegman brand, um, Wegman's brand, which is saying something because I'm kind of picky about my tomatoes. If I were just doing this recipe times one, that would be all it would take. As we know, I do it times two. And there's my oldest child, yes. Do you want your tripod or not? Um, I think I got it set, but thank you. I, it just came though. Oh, I ordered a tripod. Right there. Because Jackson's was so Yours helpful. Was Apparently my tripod is taller than his tripod, so we'll see how that goes. Thanks, Jackson. No problem. I didn't have it down. It was a... All right. Now, I've got all that out, and I'm going to stir all this around. Now, I will tell you, depending on how long I cook it, depending on how much fat is left, since I used the very, very lean meat um, and did not, did not um, drain it. I may skim some off the top if there's too much. I rarely have to do that just because of how lean the meat is, which I know would not make us a good burger, but for some reason it, it seems to be okay with this. Um, but this is kind of it. The last thing that you do after letting this cook, now look, I have let this cook anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes because that's how much time I had, to off and on for a couple of hours, just on a really low heat, you can't ruin it. The last thing that you do, and unfortunately they did not have any flat leaf parsley when I went, is to um, coarsely chop a couple handfuls of the Italian parsley and sprinkle it over the top of it. And that, depending on your liking for parsley, either is the best finish ever because it's super fresh and it just takes it to a whole new level, or you go, why did you ruin this with parsley? It's kind of up to you. The only thing I'm gonna do to dress this when I get ready to serve it, I'm gonna make a box of penne pasta. Barilla is my favorite uh, brand. I'm gonna make a box of that and drain it. And then because we all like to do our own thing in this house as far as how we build something, I'm gonna let everybody pick how much pasta, how much sauce to the pasta. I don't combine the sauce and the pasta. And then I will put out some good um, Parmesan um, cheese that I don't even know what's in the refrigerator. I think we've got a choice of either grated or um, 
the shredded. Uh, I don't think we have any hole to shred or break on top of it. But I've even hit it, the top of it with some shaved Parmesan, which is amazing. But that's it. It keeps in the refrigerator for a, a while, for about a week. Um, it freezes really well. Of course, my meat was fresh. You don't want to uh, freeze it if you've used frozen meat to cook it. Um, the one caveat is if I had let my meat go from freezer to refrigerator to completely defrost it and then cooked with it, I could put it back in the freezer, but I don't even do that. That's just not my comfort level. My comfort level is fresh food gets frozen. Frozen food that I've defrosted and cooked gets eaten completely. Okay, family favorite, super fast. That's it. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll post the recipe. And since it's decided to be November outside weather-wise, this is going to really hit the spot tonight. Thank you for watching.